Hey everyone, it's your girl Lexi coming in tonight, the millennial matchmaker. Yes, so remember to like and subscribe to my channel and remember to follow me on IG. It's the underscore millennial matchmaker. Again, it's the underscore millennial matchmaker. Like, follow, and get on IG, right? So today's going to be a pretty fun topic. I wanted to kind of change it up and we're going to talk about the pros and cons of swirling. Yes, if you guys don't know what swirling is, it's interracial dating. We're going to really get into it. Um, not saying that that's the only thing that I promote. I love black love. I love seeing white love. I love Hispanic love. If you like dating within your race, that's fine. However, this particular video is just going to speak about the pros and cons of swirl dating. Um, I love swirling. I know people that do. If you're curious about it, if you're on the fence about it and you just want to know a little bit more, then this video is for you. I feel like everybody should look at it. I feel like everybody should at least try and date outside their race at least one time, even if it's casually or something very brief, just to see maybe if it's something for you, maybe if it's something you're missing out on. So let's get into it. The pros. We're going to start with the pros first of interracial dating. Then we're going to talk about the cons. The first pro of interracial dating is that it opens up your mind. Yes, guys, you're not thinking the same way, okay? So when you're getting in a relationship, you're immediately having to, when you're in an interracial relationship, you're mainly having to look at the world in a different view through that other person because they're going to tell you about their experiences they're going to tell you about their hobbies and a lot of times different races have different hobbies i know it's stereotypical to say oh well black people don't fish or white people don't break dance but there is some truth to it right i'm sure if we pull up the statistics of you know all the competitions in the world you're going to see some big racial differences in what we like to do as far as hobbies but that also means that you've got to be open, meaning if he likes to kayak or he likes to swim or he likes outdoor water sports, ladies, if it's a black lady in particular, don't complain. Don't say, oh, well, my hair, I can't get my hair wet. Get your swimming cap on, okay? Put your life jacket on because we know you can't swim, okay? I know that was me, but a lot of us can't swim. That's just being real. Uh, I know that me, like, in out, as far as ocean, like, big bodies of water, I start panicking. And that's an anxiety attack, which could possibly cause a drowning. Like, I haven't actually tried it, but I'm sure I'd probably drown. So, I rather like to be in pools where I know I can get out. So, I could, like, swim to the exit. And if you watch me, I'm always swimming around the curb. Just because I don't like being in the middle of anywhere where I feel like, you know, it's going to take me a long time to get out. But anyways... That's besides the point. As far as swirl dating goes, if he likes to swim, if he likes to be outdoors, put that swing cap, swim, put that swimming cap on, or get you some braids, or get some kind of 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 quick weave that works, wet and wavy, that works with the water, and get out there. Put your life jacket on if you can't swim, and enjoy, enjoy, and don't complain. That's the thing. If you're going to date outside your race, you want to also be open to trying new things, trying new foods. And for the white guy that's dating a black girl or a Hispanic girl, or any really woman of color, remember that we all do dance. Yes, we're gonna be dancing at all functions. So whether you're at Hispanic dance where there's salsa and bachata in, whether you're with the Indian chick that's gonna be hitting that hitting that, uh, that finger thing they do, whether you're with an Arab chick and they're gonna hit that belly dance, or you're with a black family and we're going electric slide or we might cha-cha slide or it might be twerking. It just depends on what kind of black girl you get, okay? So just know that, you know, there's going to be a lot of culture going on regardless of whatever you do. So just be open to that. And again, don't try to bash it of, oh, what's going on here? Yes, the 75-year-old auntie or the 80-year-old grandma also dances too. So don't be shocked when you see a party going on with every event that we do. Cause that's just how it is with people of color okay so it's fun though right so you got to look at it as fun whether it's kayaking going outdoors whatever it is that you might not be used to doing just remember to have fun and to not bash it the second thing is you are going to take of a pro is you're probably going to be more of a humanitarian yes i said it um naturally when you stop seeing race as as a as a barrier into dating um usually you 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 can also look past religion you can look past um upbringing you could look past uh a lot of different things just makes you more human 
right? Because you're not so worried about the outside. You're worried about that person. You're not worried about the car they drive. You're worrying about the driver. You're not worrying about the material thing. You're worrying about the inside. And it really just makes you a better person. I know that sounds cliche to say that, oh, just because I'm interracial means I, just because I don't date interracially doesn't mean I'm not a human person. No, that's not true. But more more than likely, these people are already forward moving. They're already trying to change the world. They already see the world as a global thing as I don't see race. I really just want this um, person to be who they are. And that's what I'm worried about is who they are, not what they look like. And I think it just overall makes you a better person. It makes you say, I'm not in this box. I can't categorize this box. And as a human, I feel that you get better. Um, the labels don't matter. So I'm going to give an example of this. It's just like how we see the Kardashians, the most I don't want to say powerful because that's a stretch, but the most influential family in the world, we could say, even as far as finances go, if we want to go powerful, you know, Kylie Jenner, once again, on the Forbes list was the highest paid celebrity. These things matter. Why? Because this, these are, this is a family that are known to only date black men. Yeah, they're an interracial family, the, even down to the mother, the 60, 70 year old mother, I don't know how old she is, but she looks good is with a black man. This speaks volumes because a lot of people like to separate it and say, oh, well, it's Hollywood. That's Hollywood, Lexi, you can't. But still, you see that Hollywood transcends into what the next generation is doing. I see all the time, I go to the nail salon personally and I see these little girls like 16, 15 years old looking like Kylie Jenner. They literally look like Kylie Jenner. I'm looking at these girls like, I mean, they walking in, their booty is bang. I mean, non-black women now, you know, booty's popping, boobs are popping, hair is long, you know, color is going on and they're getting their nails down this, this long. And I'm looking over and I'm like, wow, wow. Things have changed than when I grew up. This is not how young, young girls look. I'll go on TikTok. I'll see non-black women twerking better than black women. I see them dropping and locking. I see booties popping. I see them able to dance and keep up. So over time, do I believe it's a Kardashian curse? Yes, I believe that 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 what we've seen does does transcend into human life, into what we're doing, regular people's lives. So that's a beautiful thing, right? I love that. I love that the most influential family is an interracial family. I love that they um, have thought outside the box, thought outside the race, because before when you think of the Marilyn Monroes or you think of the uh, Julia Roberts or you think of the all around influential Hollywood white woman celebrity that you'd aspire to, more than likely she's not gonna have a Denzel Washington on her arm. So it's nice to grow up seeing a family that got famous, probably on some, you know, more what people would say low or uh, ratchet ways, whatever you want to call it. However, they've they've just made an honest people of themselves and people learn to love them, learn to watch them. And the beauty is, is that they've seen outside race and nobody cares. Everybody's happy. They're still very powerful. Kanye is still good. It, it's just beautiful to watch that interracial um, relationships are changing the world and they're changing the next generation and a lot of women now and men I see even black men they get little Kylie Jenner looking women it's happening a lot more and I love it um, a lot more not so much in millennials but the generation after us the Billy Ellis's those are the ones those are the ones doing it watch it I know what I'm talking about the next thing why it's a pro of dating interracially is that the world is changing, whether we want to say it or not. Um, I was in an interracial marriage for six years and people like to make you feel like, oh, well, it's going to be such a big change and people are going to see you as this. And you get all these fear tactics. These are people that they're just fear musters. They're fear busters. All they do is just talk about what could go wrong. But that stuff is simply not true. I didn't experience any of these racial things. I'm in the Hick town. I'm in the Hickville. I mean, of course, there were might be people that stared a little bit longer or might have been a little more curious or might have said, you know, something like, oh, wow, how did you guys meet? But I've never really experienced. And I guess if you're searching for it, you'll find it. Of course, if you're going out like those, there are interracial couples that are just trolls and they just do it to get people angry and they're just angry themselves. And they're out there, you know, trying to prove that there's a problem when really I haven't mentioned, I haven't seen any problems with it, um, no matter where you are. And I'm in the South. So I feel like, of course, the older generation, if you're going to be around older people, there is a big there's a big change. There's a big difference in uh, how they see it. However, in our generation, the majority of people that you interact with every day, they get it. 
they get it and they're happy and i think the pro is that the world is changing the world is changing like i said with the kardashians and everything else and i feel like interracial dating is just something that you need to be on the eye for because it's happening whether you like it or not um another pro of interracial dating is you're automatically doing social justice it's like a civil rights movement. And I know it sounds so cliche to say, it's like, oh, well, I just date an Asian girl. That just means that I understand Asian people. No, it doesn't mean that. But it does help with you giving a perspective to someone and you're not just giving a blind perspective. But I've seen so many um, non-Black groups that will make a judgment on Black people. Or I'll see so many Black people making a judgment on non-Black people. And I'm like, have you experienced them? Have you ever dated one? Have you? No, but I have a friend or I got a friend who got a friend or I, no, I've got a cousin that's got a brother or no, I've got a, I've dated briefly. No, that those things don't count. So we count marriages. We turn, we count long-term relationships. If you've not dated them or been with them, then please, please keep your opinion to yourself. You know, so a lot of these uh, notions and, and rumors are fueled by people that haven't even tried it. That's like me, you trying to tell me about sushi and you've never, you've got a, you've got a raw fish allergy. you got a shellfish allergy and you're going to come tell me about sushi? Come on now. So don't take advice from someone that hasn't done it. And the majority of the people that are making assumptions haven't tried it, haven't done it. So don't listen to them. Try it for yourself. Um, another pro about interracial dating is you're giving your children a lot more. Yes. So mixed kids aren't just you know, uh, rumored to be more beautiful or stereotyped, that's the word, to be more beautiful. No, it's not about that. Mixed kids have an interesting, intriguing side to them because people are always curious to know. So when you hear one, I'm half Chinese and half uh, bah Bohemian, or I'm half, um, I'm half Puerto Rican and half Jamaican, these things are not just, oh, you're mixed. It's also that people are curious to figure out wow so are you buddhist or are you christian are you jewish or are you hindu see these are things that people are intrigued about because they want to see how was she raised how did the, you know who gave up their religion or who ended up or did she have both so you can give your children a lot more i mean when you're raising a mixed child which i'm doing so i could speak on this there's a lot of culture that you're giving them i have a lot of my jamaican culture then i grew up in france so i've given them a little bit of that and then I'm also in America and I'm black and I'm black American. So I've got all these things that are going on with me that I can give my child. And then I, you get in a relationship with someone that's another race and they have their customs and they have their languages and they have their rituals and things that they do that they also want to add on the list. So what does that give you? That gives you a child that's so well cultured. That gives you a child that could sing the dreidel song, then turn it around and do jingle bell rock because they had been exposed to everything because my mom's this, my dad's that, and they made me and I got it all right. So you got this superhuman that you made and you're giving them all this culture and as kids as we know kids can absorb it they can just absorb it all they can learn another language they can earn, understand that religion and if that's all they know that's all they're going to ever know so you're actually changing the world just by being in an interracial relationship because you're raising a child that has more culture just think about it if i'm a black woman well i am a black woman <laughs> and i give with another black man we're probably gonna have the same more standards unless he's coming from maybe africa or another country, another black country. Um, if he's from here or he's another Jamaican, like I'm Jamaican, and we get together, a lot of our rules, foods are gonna be the same. So we're gonna introduce them to, you know, oxtails, plantains, rice and peas, curry chicken. These are the things that I've been exposed to. And um, they're probably gonna know reggae music. They're gonna listen to Bob Marley. They're gonna listen to Luciano. They're gonna listen to all these great artists and that's gonna be their culture. Now, you could give your child all of that and then you could get with someone from China and then they're also going to give them the beautiful um, Chinese uh, oriental outfits that they wear. And then they're also going to tra train them, you know, the tea, how to do their tea time. Then they're also going to train them and speak Chinese. And then they're also going to teach them, you know, so these are things that you could get all of those things that you would give them in a traditional family if you want to traditional way. But you also can add the other culture. So you've actually kind of made two different humans in one. It's like a two for one deal. You ever seen like when you get yogurt and then they have like, or the ice cream, like what is it called? Napoleon or something. And you get chocolate, vanilla and strawberry. Mm. So if you're feeling for a little bit of strawberry, you just, it's all in the same box. 
So you just made a little Napoleon ice cream, baby. Mm, there you have it. So the next thing that you also gonna have a pro on is that you automatically become the token couple, right? Not knowingly, not intentionally, but over time you look like, wow, I'm sorry, to this day I still do it. Like when I see an interracial couple, even in Hollywood, like anywhere you see them, usually you stop, you look, and that's why people are staring. It's not necessarily that they're mad, they're just kind of like, wow, how did they get together? And it, it looks better, I'm sorry. And in your friend zone, in at work, at different places, everywhere you go, people are going to be always um, looking at you guys as, oh, they're here because people naturally want to feel like uh, they're progressive, even if they're not. People naturally want to feel like they are, they have uh, knowledge about the world and that they're open to different cultures. And so when they have friends that are interracially dating, it's almost like, Oh yeah, look, they're coming, they're coming, you know, they're coming. The the Hawaiian and the Hawaiian and then the the Hawaiian and the Puerto Rican guy. The Hawaiian and the Colombian couple, the the Asian and the black couple. You know, these things look like they look great. They look great. And you become a token couple over time. So for whatever reason, uh, people love to see it more uh, on IG. People love to see it in, in work. People just love to see interracial couples. So I know personally for me, it was always um, that over over time, you just become token because they just know that y'all are just different and people love different sometimes. Um, it makes you almost believe that love conquers all. And when people see you guys, you represent that. You represent that love conquers all. You represent that it doesn't matter the shade, this person saw past it and it's working for them and it's a beautiful thing. Um, another thing is the cons. So we went through the pros. <clears throat> now we're going to go to the cons. The first con is you're not going to be able to be in a, in a racial relationship if you are ultra sensitive. And the reason why this is a con is because most people are ultra sensitive. People can't take a joke. People can't laugh at themselves. People can't uh, make fun of themselves and they can't, they take themselves way too seriously. I just had this happen the other day. A lady said that, yeah, you know, I, I tried to date a black guy, a white guy. And this was a black woman now. But I was done. I, I, I was done with him when he was on the phone and he said, hey, I'm dating a black girl now. And I said, well, what's wrong with that? You're black, aren't you? Well, yeah, but he didn't have to disclose my race and he didn't have to tell people. And I'm like, yikes, let me just go ahead and sip this tea. Because that's the problem with interracial dating is that most people are ultra sensitive and it's for thick skinned people. And it doesn't even have to be thick skinned. You just have to take yourself too seriously. So you go to a comedy show, nine times out of 10, a comedian's gonna be laughing at some sort of racial joke, right? And it's hilarious because every joke kind of has some truth to it and it's stereotypical. But if you don't take yourself too seriously, you're gonna be in the crowd laughing too. There are stereotypes for certain races and you've gotta learn to laugh at yourself. Um, it just doesn't happen much. Most people, they get all in a wad. If you say one thing, oh, well, you know, I don't want you to talk about me like that or, or what you're trying to say because I'm black. Oh, da, da, da. So before you know it, it just becomes a drama. So it has to be with people that can laugh at themselves that you should be able to come over here and say, girl, don't get ratchet up in here or, you know, don't take them wigs off or you're going to get those. It's hilarious because, you know, whatever. It's a joke. It's just like me. I could laugh at the white guy and say, you know, you better get your honky tonk out of here so these are things that are funny if you are mature enough to make a joke of yourself and just like if you go to a comedy show and you pay a hundred dollars for front row tickets and you laugh you laugh because there's truth to it and there's nothing wrong with it and this sensitive cancel culture is not going to get you far because honestly we're all the same and obviously if you're together and you guys are planning on getting married and you guys want to have children there is not gonna, there's no reason to be getting mad because someone says oh i'm with a black girl or they say something that is the truth or even if it's a joke get over it right just get over it and most people can't do that so that's a con another con is the family may never come around you just have to accept that that's with anybody though you know it might be a little bit worse obviously if you go outside of your race especially if they were very into a traditional family or they really wanted you to do the traditional way however there's just the reality the sad reality that sometimes the family just doesn't come around and the good news could be that hopefully the family members that matter do and then the more distant aunts and uncles might not 
All you have to do is just do what it is that you were doing anyway. It's your life. You have one life to live. Why are we going to live it caged up? Um, if they don't come around, they just don't come around. And keep doing you. Keep enjoying it. Okay? Um, another thing that's a very big con for interracial dating is that it's easy when you argue. It's easy when you break up that it always comes back down to race. And that's a sad, uh, that's a sad shame that people do. It's really a, a mistruth. It's not true. And it happens too much. You get in an argument and out of nowhere, it's because I'm white. And it's like, no, it's not because you're white. It's because you're irresponsible, immature, bratty, manipulative type of bitch. That's why. So stop trying to put it on the race or you know, oh, she didn't want to be with me because I was, you know, it could have been a six month, sometimes years relationship. And the problem was because I was black. Really? Didn't you cheat on her three times? Well, yeah, but that's not it. So a lot of arguments before you know it, and I, I've had it happen. Like, even sometimes you get argument and slur words come out, you know, because you're angry. Does that mean that it's it's human nature when you get angry that you hit below the belt and you say things that don't you don't mean does again it goes back to the sensitive thing you've got to look past that and you've got to say no i think guys if we look at the grand scheme of things 50 percent of marriages end in divorce if we look at the grand scheme of things uh most relationships are going to end you can only marry one person meaning that a lot of people you date you're going to end up breaking up with anyway so statistics are on your side to show that you probably going to break up anyway it had nothing to do with race so stop trying to blame the race especially when it doesn't work out and it really puts a big hurdle to people that do want to interracially date because they're going to hear, oh, this person tried it and they think because of the race, it was because of that. No, you guys, it has nothing to do with that. So remember to look at what the real issue is in the relationship and don't always try to blame it on race. Sometimes it is an issue, like I said, but generally that's with the family or external people. But normally if you're together with someone, you're sleeping with someone, you've grown to love this person, very rarely could it be a problem between you two of race. However, now extended family, that's a different thing. But you two, probably that's not an issue. Another thing is that um, a lot of people uh, have dated the low grade part of another race and then they want to generalize it. That's a big problem, right? Because you'll hear guys, I'll hear them all the time say, oh yeah, you know, I dated a black girl. Mm -hmm. And um, she was just so materialistic. She had a, a R8 Audi. This is a real story now. She had an R8 Audi and, and, and she owned all these businesses and she had this penthouse in Buckhead and, you know, she was just so materialistic. That's all she wanted. And, um, you know, so I think that's how black girls are. So it was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You just made a whole generalization based on one woman. I always ask that, show me a picture of her because I like to analyze people. Obviously, this is what I do. And I see this girl and she's, gorgeous and she's you know and it looks like an ig model and she does have an r8 and she's very successful business wise and she's so well spoken and i'm thinking okay let's just change this out if she wasn't a black girl and she was a white woman with all of these things and you're white as well would you have been able to get with her probably not he did have a good job and yes he was successful himself he had a couple of franchises but it wasn't to the level of where she was clearly she was outranking him in the financial realm in the looks realm in the sophistication realm he was a great catch however you know in the realm of what probably she's used to dating might even be uh it's probably ceos like millionaire plus right and again he just immediately put it to race but he probably wouldn't have been able to attain that in his own race so that's something that people need to understand it's like if you're a black woman and you can't get with the black ceo that's the highest in the company or the ball player or whatever it is that you rank as the highest guy within your race what makes you think that you can go into the hispanic race or the white race or any other race and get that either you can't so a lot of people have unrealistic expectations in interracial dating and they probably were already with the bottom of the barrel in their own race and then they wanted to go high in the other race and then they get mad because they saw themselves differently because they went outside their race and this happens all too often stop people run from people like this you know some girls too they'll be like oh i dated a white guy and then you start to hear this guy and this guy's some sort of trailer park trash i mean it's like well if that's the kind of white guy caliber you could have gotten then no wonder no wonder it didn't work out you if you can't date high in your own race don't categorize it by the other race so that's another thing that goes into my next point about the con is that people don't categorize 
People don't categorize. They're so easy to say, oh, I dated an Asian chick. Okay, you dated an Asian chick. What does that mean? She could have been a Tokidoki porn star for all we know. That doesn't necessarily mean because she's Asian that she was book reading and she was the head of her class and she was a librarian that owned all these different libraries. So you got to explain just like you would in your own race. If you were dating someone in your own race, you would say, hey, she's a doctor or oh, she's a lawyer or she's a head marketing chick or she's very friendly. She's so nice. She's well read. She's the president of this group. She volunteers. These are things that you have to ex actually explain. Just as you would categorize a woman in your own race group, you have to categorize them in another race group. It's not just because you can say, oh, you know, she was, she's, she's Tahiti. She's from Tahiti. She's Tahitian. That we're going to think of this exotic, tropical, beautiful woman. No, no, no. We need to know that she wasn't from Tahiti under a bridge. You know what I mean? So categorize what it is. It's not just because you went outside your race that you got the tip and the cream of the crop. Speak about what kind of woman that person is because that's another thing with interracial dating. People will just say, I dated a black girl and it doesn't mean we're not all created equal. Or I dated a white guy, you guys are not all created equal. You know, I dated a Latina chick, they're not all created equal. So explain more about the person because you have to stop looking at more as just a racial group and say, oh, one, one person is this, that, that should explain it all, right? That should explain it all, she was black. That should explain it all. She was the Latina. That should explain it. No. Just like you would in your own group. We need to know a little bit more about this person. And that's how we can go back to, like I said with my video, about equally yoked. And did you guys have the same background, the same life goals, and the same uh, desires in, in life? So that's another thing. And last but not least, dating outside your race, it's a con for some people. Is It takes a lot of compromise, a lot more compromise, and a lot more teaching. Why? Because quite naturally, most people that were just raised in one traditional race or one traditional ethnicity, one traditional national country, you're just not exposed to the other people. So over time, you do have to learn. A lot of times, it's not knowing. That's the big fear, right? You don't know. You cannot say that you know. Yes, you might be friends with some other races. Don't get me wrong. You might have gone to school with other races. You might have um, even befriended other races. But it's not the same thing as dating and being in. And when I say being in, that means literally in and in somebody else and living with somebody else and around somebody else. That's a totally different thing when you're marrying and dating another race. So you don't know. So you have to learn, right? You can't sit here and just say, oh, well, because I'm going to go date... Um, this Native American person, nine times out of 10, if you've not been around Native Americans in the way that they live, in the way that they, they, they love people, the way that they believe, these are things that you only know by dating one and you have to learn. So if you're not in a student mentality and you don't want to know anything and you think you know everything and you think you're the best, you think your race is the best and you think that, you know, whatever they do is retarded, then you're not going to be able to interracially date. You're going to have to compromise because you're probably going to have to do maybe two weddings, two traditional things, two rituals, two different kinds of things. So that's a compromise, right? Because it's not going to just be your way or the highway. If you want to really care about that person and you're not selfish, then you're going to look into also what it is they want to do and how they do things. And unfortunately, a lot of people don't have that. They don't want to compromise and they don't want to learn. So it's because you've only seen the world through your lens if you're not willing to take a back seat and say, tell me about how you guys do things and why is it that way? And interesting, I love to learn Then stay within your race. Please don't come over in the interracial pool. So I hope that I helped you guys really understand what it is to date interracially, the pros and the cons. The world is changing, guys. Give it a try. I always say at least try it. If it doesn't work out, tant pis. Que sera sera, right? Love you guys. Remember to like and subscribe. Have a great night. Millennial Matchmaker. Bye.